right, this next section is going to take us into three dimensions. We're going to take a region in the plane, the same kind of region that we can now find the area of, and we're going to use that as the base of a solid. And that base is going to have um, cross-sectional, like cross-sections that come up out of the plane at us, and we're going to know the shape of the cross-sections. So here's a uh, visual of what I'm talking about. So the base is going to be a quarter circle in quadrant one, and the cross sections coming up out of the base are going to be squares. And so that creates a three-dimensional solid with corners, even though the base is a circle. Um, the corners are caused by the corners of the square, so you have some edges on your shape. Um, and it forms that sort of a, a three-dimensional solid. Okay. Here are some more visualizations of these types of solids. You have some sort of region in the plane, and then you can have any sort of shape coming up out of the plane at you. Here are just some more, more pictures for you to, to visualize what's going on here. Um, and also a real world example. If you slice a pear, cross sections are going to be semicircles. So you can add up the volume of all of those semicircles to get the volume of a pair. Um, in order to do the math today, some area formulas that you should either know or have handy are the area of a square, whether you know the diagonal or the side length, the area of an equilateral triangle, the area of an isosceles right triangle, whether you know the side length or the diagonal, um, the area of a circle and the area of a semicircle. Um, these are formulas that you should either be able to drive or memorize. Um, probably the one that is least familiar to you is the area of an equilateral triangle, um, this one. And if you want to derive it yourself, then you can use trig to find the height of this triangle, knowing that the angles are all 60 degrees. And then you can take the side length times the height. Um, the other useful um, piece from geometry is going to be the volume of a prism. Um, and I want you to be comfortable with recognizing that, that um, the volume of a prism is actually area of the base, so one of these areas, times the height. And the height is going to be the distance between the two bases. And instead of thinking of the height the way that we almost always drew it in geometry class, we're actually going to think of the height as a sideways measurement for these problems. So the height is still going to be the distance between the two bases. It's just that we're not going to have our base. We're not going to be sitting on one of the bases generally. All right. So here's an example problem. Finally, um, let R be the region enclosed between Y equals 1 half X squared and the line Y equals 4. R is the base of a solid with cross sections perpendicular to the Y axis that are squares. What is the volume of the solid? So we're going to start by drawing a picture of the region. So we have one half x squared. I'm not going to make a oops. I'm not going to make a perfect picture. I'm just going to do the best I can. Um, I know that one half x squared is going to be a parabola. It's going to be a little bit wider than a normal parabola, but I'm just making a sketch here. Um, and then y equals four is going to be a horizontal line. And so here is our region. And then R is the base of a solid with cross sections perpendicular to the Y axis that are squares. So coming up out of the plane at us, we have square cross sections. Okay, so we have a three dimensional shape um, sitting in the plane and coming up kind of out of my screen at you. I am going to, after you draw R, I recommend so step one, I'd say draw R. And then step two, I would say draw a cross section. Get a picture of what a cross section looks like. So since these are squares, the cross section is going to look like this. And it's going to have a little tiny thickness. It's going to be a three dimensional shape because when I slice this, I'm going to get slices. Um, the, it's a square, so the two side lengths are going to be equal. And the thickness, because I'm perpendicular to the y-axis, is going to be dy. 
Um, and then this distance right here would be the distance from the y-axis out to our curve. So it's going to be our x-coordinate of our curve. So this point would be x comma y, and this distance here would be x. But that's not all the way across the square. That's only halfway across the square. So actually, um, because it's symmetric, this distance is going to be 2x, and so is this one. But then because our slices are perpendicular to the y-axis, we don't want to have these in terms of x. We want to have um, our dimensions in terms of y. So the volume of one of these things would be um, 4x squared times dy. But that's sort of useless because it has x's and y's in it. So um, I'm going to use this translator to make it only have y's in it. I know that y equals 1 half x squared. So x squared would be 2y. So we're going to find the area, or the volume really, because it has a tiny thickness. So when I rewrite this, it's going to be volume is equal to 4 times 2y dy or 8y dy. Now we're happy because we only have one variable. We don't have two different variables. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a magical tool that would add up infinitely many, infinitely skinny cross sections. So we're going to use an integral. We're going to add up all of these volumes to get the total volume. So this is the volume of one square, and the integral will give us the volume of infinitely many squares. Now these are y-coordinates, so that means that our integral should start at the bottom of our shape and end when we get to the top of our shape. So it should start at y equals 0, which would be the vertex of that parabola. And it should end when we get to that horizontal line, y equals 4. This is a fairly straightforward integral, so I'm actually going to solve it. But most of the notes today, I'm not going to solve the integrals because we've practiced solving integrals before, and I'm going to let you um, ask questions on those if you need to. But this answer will tell us the volume of our shape. So 8y dy would be um, 8y squared over 2 from 0 to 4. So that would be um, 4 times 16 or 64 for a volume. All right, um, I want to show you a, a video demonstration of what this looks like. Um, this demonstration is um, in three dimensions over here and in the plane on the left. So you can see the parabola. It's the same one that I drew. And now you can see those squares coming up out of the plane at you and they get wider as you get further closer to, oh, this one, I guess, was x equals 2, and I think I went to x equals 4. So anyway, um, I mean y equals 4. So there's what your three-dimensional shape looks like. Your thickness is dy. Um, your dimensions, and I, I guess they actually translated the dimensions, so it was the dimension is 2 times the square root of 2y. The area would be 8y. And they only integrated from 0 to 2 because they stopped at y equals 2. But that's the visualization of what the shape looks like. Okay. All right, for example two, we're going to have a region enclosed in the first quadrant between f of x equals x squared and the line x equals 4. This time, our cross sections are going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. So that means our little tiny thickness is going to be dx. And this time, our side length is going to be the y-coordinate. We don't have to double anything because we're not symmetric about uh, the um, symmetric about the uh, axis. So this is our y-coordinate. But we also know that our y-coordinate is the x squared. So now everything is in terms of x. 
and these are equilateral triangles. So we're going to use our new equilateral triangle formula to figure out the volume of the base. So the volume of one of these prisms is going to be the area of the base times the height. Because it's an equilateral triangle, that's going to be 1 fourth, or sorry, square root of 3 over 4 times the side length squared. And then times the little tidy thickness. That's the volume of one of our prisms. And if I want to know the volume of all of the whole shape, then I'm going to use the magical adding tool to do an integral from 0 to 4, because these are x coordinates now, of square root of 3 over 4, x to the fourth dx. I'm going to stop there. I know we could integrate that. I know we could get an answer. But um, I'm really just setting up the integrals because that's the part that's new to us today. All right. Again, we have the same region. We're still in the um, xy plane with x squared and x equals 4. This time, r is the base of the solid with cross sections perpendicular to the x axis that are semicircles. So if I draw one cross section, I have a semicircle and it has a little tiny thickness. And again, these are perpendicular to the x-axis, so my thickness is going to be dx. My diameter would be x squared, would be my diameter. So that means my radius would be x squared over 2. So the volume of one of these prisms would be pi times the radius squared. half of that because it's going to be a semicircle. Times the thickness. And so when I integrate this, it's going to be pi over 8 of x to the fourth dx. And again, I'm going to integrate from 0 to 4 because those are the x-coordinates. Right? And again, we would want to integrate that, and that's totally something that you can do. We're just not going to go through the steps in this video. All right, last example. This time, our curve, our region is enclosed between two different curves, x squared minus 1 and 1 minus x squared. r is the base of a solid with cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis that are squares with one base in the plane. So we have squares coming up out of the plane at us, sometimes wide and sometimes narrow. If I draw just one of those squares with a tiny thickness, so it's really a prism, because it's perpendicular to the x-axis, the thickness is going to be dx. And the distance between the two curves is going to give us the side length. So the side length is going to be um, the taller curve minus the shorter curve. So it's going to be g minus f. So it's going to be 1 minus x squared minus x squared minus 1. Or another way of saying that would be 2 minus 2x squared. So our volume is going to be, since it's squared, 2 minus 2x squared squared times our thickness, and that's the volume of one of our prisms. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the integral from where they intersect to where they intersect. So we're going to take the integral from negative 1 to 1. Sometimes I have kids ask me, would, I, would it be OK if I did the integral from 0 to 1 and doubled it? Sure, if you notice that symmetry, you can save yourself maybe a little bit of arithmetic by doubling, you know, the, just going from 0 to 1, and then doubling that answer. All right, that's a lot of examples of volume with known cross-sectional areas. Good luck today.